So a lot of the investors that, that uh, watched the Dale's report, I imagine everybody knows the supply chain, but everybody understands it. You wrote a great article on LinkedIn about it. Tell me a little bit about why the supply chain matters and why it's important to pick the right links in that chain. Yeah, I think if you look at traditional business, and I think uh, a lot of times cannabis globally is looked at like a pharmaceutical company, and now more and more in Canada, we're looking at a CPG company. Uh, those, um, those industries have really well-defined supply chains. There's usually someone who's providing that active ingredient. There's a manufacturer. A lot of cases, there's a well-defined distribution. And then you hit retailer, you hit a patient. So when we look at cannabis and that vertical integration where everyone was trying to do everything, without that focus, it's hard to say where the business would be stronger or not, and you're going to fall down. So with the supply chain and the, and the way that it's evolved over in business is really everyone focuses on their strengths, and that way we're getting the best product uh, that, the, that the patient or the consumer needs at the end. You talk about your strength, the way you, your promise is certainly positioned to investors is purity assured cannabis concentrate. So why did you pick that part of the supply chain and how do you feel you can defend and grow from there? Yeah, I think when we looked at the supply chain, we wanted to pick somewhere where we thought with our expertise we can add the most value. And we also looked to where we thought we could take the most value out, uh, you know, based on some of our backgrounds, uh, Pat being pharm pharmaceuticals. We knew kind of the, the cost of patient acquisition and, and, and everything that went into the marketing of it. And where we thought we could bring more of the manufacturing strength and we thought we could get that most value out. And when you're looking at the manufacturing and when you really don't have a consumer-facing brand, you really need to have something that you can go out to your B2B customers and really uh, give them the, the confidence to buy in you. And for us, that was quality. So when you're doing business to business, you have a strategic buyer, you have an economic buyer, you have a technical buyer. Quality is something that everybody likes to hear, but when it gets to margin compression, which we're certainly seeing this north of the border, cost matters as well. How do you defend, as you talk, to get the most value out that I can be in the quality game and still protect margins? Yeah, for sure. And I think that's why we stuck to, in the manufacturing side, we stuck to a wholesale model where we buy cannabis from multiple different suppliers. We own that inventory and then we sell it. Uh, whereas some other people in the industry have gone more of like a tolling model where they're, they don't actually own the inventory. They're taking someone's inventory, transforming it and sending it back to them. So for us, where we think that that help with that value and, and with that margin compression is on creating more inventory for our customers, not just what they could already grow themselves. And then as we move towards uh, CPG or pharma coming into the space more and more, obviously they don't want to own down the supply chain. So what we give them is that secure supply chain. A lot of times people are also willing to pay more for uh, the fact that we're so well established and we do operate at scale and the fact that we do have this quality uh, not only self-declared but a lot of uh, international certification as well. Mm -hmm.